Hey, everybody. Grant Miller here with Alina Garcia, who's running for state house. I feel I've known you your whole political career. I you believe know, so, yeah. You've been serving our community, being aides to city people, county people, United States senators. You've done it all. But let's find out more about you. So we're going to find out. Where were you born? Well, I was born in Cuba, and um, I came to the United States in the early 60s. My parents were, um, you know, my mom My mom always knew that Fidel Castro was a devil. And uh, we left Cuba um, very, very soon after um, they took power. So where was the first place your family moved to? Do you remember? Well, we lived in Little Havana, uh, around Southwest 4th Street and 8th Avenue, I want to say. Right on the edge of downtown. Yes, yes, in that area behind. There was a big car dealership. I think that there's still a car dealership there. The Brickle Motors yeah. is there. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the area where we used to live. My mom rented a, a really big house because... Um, is it big still? Do you ever go by that house? You know, I, I don't re I don't know exactly where it was because I was, I was like three years old when we first came from Cuba. But she rented a really big house that had a lot of rooms and a lot of bathrooms. And when people would come from Cuba, they would stay with us. because Other relatives. Were, uh, other relatives and people we knew because there was a huge immigration. So my mom would, she would cook and she would, you know, do their hair and she would do laundry. And that's... That was the first way that, you know, we supported our family and my father would would help, you know, with the chores around the house. So what was too. your dad's first job when he came here? Well, uh, he became a dishwasher at the Americana Sheraton back in the day. And he stayed working there for many, many years. He became a waiter and uh, he became part of the union of the waiters back in the day at the Americana Sheraton. Yeah. For many, many years. And your mom, what did she do? My mom was a hairdresser by trade. She was a hairdresser in Cuba and she was able to to get her license. I remember that we had to go to Costa Rica for some reason. Of, uh, I think it was for her citizenship in order for her to get her cosmetology license. And um, and she became a cosmetologist. Do you have any brothers and sisters? I do. I do. I have a brother who's a Catholic priest. He lives in Puerto Rico. Uh, his name is Monsignor Wilfredo Peña. I'm very proud so do you of him. Call him. What do you call him? Do you call him Monsignor? Or do you, what's your brother's name? I, uh, his name is, um, well, they call him Father Willie, but I call him Mi Hermanito, you know, my brother. My yeah, I mean, brother. it's like everybody else calls him on seat. Okay, who else? What other relative you have? Uh, I also have another brother that lives in Orlando. I have two brothers. And they're younger? My my priest brother is older, and my younger brother, David, that lives in Orlando, is 10 years younger. One is 10 years older, the other one is 10 years younger. Okay, so where did you go to elementary school? Elementary school, my gosh. I went to um, uh, Riverside Elementary. I went to St. Peter and Paul. I went to Arbondale Elementary. We moved around a lot. You know? Okay. In elementary school, who was your favorite teacher? <laughs> my favorite teacher was Mrs. Carr. That was my fifth grade teacher. She was wonderful. Isn't that crazy? Not saying how old we are, but we remember our favorite teachers. Where did you go to middle school, junior high for us? Junior high, I went to um, Shenandoah. I also went to um, Shenandoah, and I went to Assumption Academy. Do you have a favorite teacher? Uh, no, I have a favorite teacher in high school. Okay, so you're Stingray, Miami High. Miami High, yeah. Uh, so who was your favorite teacher there? Uh, Mr. Weiner. He was the math teacher. Well, do you remember his first name? It was a no. <laughs> we oh. used to sing to him, Oh, I wish I were an Oscar. No Mayer. way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, but from, he was great. He was a sport. Right, so, so you went from there, you went to Miami Dade for a while. Miami Dade College. And then yeah. you started, you opened a business, am I correct? At, yes. At 20 ish? Yes, yes. What What was the name of the business? What type of business? Uh, well, actually, at first I had, I, I got married and had children. Oh, so I wasn't oh. working during that time. Ah. So then afterwards. How many children do you have? I have three kids. Yeah, I have I have three wonderful children, and they have given me 11 grandchildren. Wait. Three children. <laughs> three, and yeah. What, what are the children's names? Alani. Right. Aline and Jorge. Jorge Cruz, Alani Hernandez, now is her married name, and Aline Fernandez okay. is her married name. And who has the most? The most is Aline. How many? She's got five. 
Five. Yeah, she has five. No TV in that house? No TV. Oh, wait. So, oh, wait. So, you got 11 children. But let's get back to your path. So, you open, you have, you get your family. And then you open a, what kind of business? It was a beauty salon. I was, you know, following the tracks of my mom, even though I wasn't a hairdresser, but I was a business person. So uh, I had Le Mirage. I, it was in the heart of um, District 115, where I'm running now on Southwest 8th Street and 82nd is, Avenue. Is it a little spooky? I use the word spooky. That you're knocking on doors that your mother took care of. These old women, they go, I know your mom. Because that was, I mean, you're, or know you from hairdressing from 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. It happens all the time. Actually, in, in the beauty salon that we have, we did a lot of, um, Beauty pageants, you know, we were the 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 shop that did the hair for the for the candidates right. for the, in the beauty pageant thing, and we did the Kiwanis and we did the Hispanic, um, what was it called? Is Hispanic? It, it, it's well, it was the, the two more popular um, beauty pageants we used to do them, and I know a lot of the girls that you know, and I see them every so often. I, oh, you know, and they remember me, and it's it's a lot of fun. All right, so then after that. You started serving in the community. What was your first job in, I use the word, politics? Who was your first? My The first legislator that I worked for, God rest his soul, his name is Eladio Armesto Garcia, and it was um, in the um, Florida House of Representatives. And where was that district? That district, I don't remember the number of the district. So I think was it was, it? but it was um, 30, it was Little Havana and had Coral Gables. The districts change every uh, The numbers years. change and the boundaries change. Uh, so, but it was uh, Little Havana and and uh, and uh, Coral Gables. So you've China. served, we, we figured out, about 10 or 11 elected yes, officials. Yes. Well, I've served in the House of Representatives. The served, United States? Yes, in the House of Representatives in the United States and the state of Florida and the Senate for the state of Florida. I served in the cabinet. Um, I served the city of Miami. Who's the cabinet person you work for? Jimmy Patronus, CFO Jimmy Patronus. He's people a great don't, guy. Most people don't know there's even a, a elected position for that. <laughs> yes, yeah. Chief Patronus is a wonderful man. He he does a great job. Okay, and then you did some. You so you've done local state house, state senate, United States Senate, United States House of Representatives. You you city of Miami, city of Miami. You served working with uh, now. Uh, will be changing Dade County, Steve Bovo. Yes. People don't realize the best thing that happened to us, that he's the mayor of Hialeah. Yes, he second, is. Second or third largest city in the, in the yes, county. Yes, yes. The number one city in the country that not, that is mostly one uh, non-diverse. One is almost all 98% Hispanic. That's the biggest in the country, one city. It is... Dade County, people don't realize, those cities are so important to us. They are. I mean. So Hialeah is known as the city of progress, all the factories, and we need to bring all those factories back. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, where Stevens, the Jewish deli, that used to be all warehouses and factories. Mm -hmm. But so we were very lucky to have him, the mayor of Hialeah, because Hialeah is up and coming. And people, if you have money, that's where to buy. <laughs> Uh, so, all right. So you work for him and everyone you work for were completely, ag not aggressive, not the right word. They were all pro Miami-Dade, it seemed like. Yes. They absolutely. served really well. Yes. Yes. We can't go into all of them because there's so many. All right. So what has changed you to serve even more for position? Well, you know, um, I have 11 grandkids and I want to ensure do, that the you know state of the Florida, of you course know. I know all the names. Are you kidding? Of course, I know all the names. I'm going to name them right now. My mother okay. only had four boys, and she forgot my. I didn't have a name for a month. Oh, but you know what? When I start calling them, I start naming names, and it takes me a while to get to the names. It's a lot of them. My my oldest is Anthony. How old is Anthony? Anthony is 18. Anthony, Ashley, Keith. Uh, you going family? Lucas. You going by families, right? No. Oh. I'm going by age. Oh. Lucas, Christian, JJ, Joseph, John. Um, Georgie, Georgie, Alessandra. Then we have the three little ones, uh, Amaya, Caesar, and uh, and Elena. So, All the girls, their names have to start with an A, by the way. So, Christmas and 
birthdays must be tough on you. No, they're a lot of fun. You, you know, that my gift to all of my grandkids is Florida prepaid. I really believe in that. I, education is super important, and it's very important that you are not in debt when you're done with school, right? Well, you're going to still possibly be in debt, but if you do the Florida prepay, it, get, it eliminates 99% of it. Of course. Yeah. Of course, yeah. If people say you got free uh, Florida pre it's everything. No. It's, but yeah, but then they can also apply for bright scholar, uh, bright scholarships. They can apply for right. other grants. Correct. It's a great but thing that we the do. the the bulk of their education is, is taken care is of. taken care of, and that's what grandma does. She takes care of that. That's education. your job. That's my job. Well, we know you're not going to make it rich, right? Being a state rep. How much does it pay for a state rep? I really don't know. I, I think it's thirty thousand. Well, it sounds fine. It's fine. You're not you know, doing it for the money. I'm not doing it people, for the money. No, think, absolutely not. You, people think state reps uh, a big paying job. No, you do it because you love it. All right. So let's do your let's do the boundaries. So your hair salon is in the heart and soul of of your the district. Westchester area. Yeah. yeah, of my district. I, you pronounce it properly. Let's hear how you pronounce Westchester. Westchester. Okay, so I want to make sure you got it right. <laughs> I, you know, I have shirts that say I love Westchester. Yes. I just love Westchester because it's it's such a diverse group and people all love their community. All right. So you go from Color Bay. Color Bay, which is a great area. Yeah. It's a great, great town. That's, yeah. It's Tim Mirabaugh, who is the mayor who grew up in Color Bay, played baseball in Color Bay, went to Southridge. He's a great guy. Great guy. And as you know, we talked about it before the show. Southland Mall is going to be knocked down a billion dollar project. That's that's going to be a, a game changer for Cutler Bay because you're going to have a lot of wonderful restaurants and everything. It's going to be awesome. And then the the big winner of it is Mercedes Benz because they own that lot right behind it and they're killing it. So you got Cutler Bay uh, has doubled its population. Yes. A big vo voting block there. Yes. Big, big. Uh, I was there. Actually, I was there last night because Senator Eliana Garcia got them a um, hundred thousand dollars for their elderly program, and I think like four hundred and fifty or five hundred and forty. I don't remember which it was uh, for some other projects in, in Cutler Bay. Oh yeah, she's kicking butt. People ask me if we're sisters. We're not sisters, but we, we share the same last name. <laughs> uh, she's kicking butt. Okay, and then we go up to Palmetto Bay. You know, it's for the price. Best place to live in the South for the price. Um, proactive town. Very community is really involved there, correct? Yes, very much involved. Yeah. Ha have you walked in Cutler Bay and Palmetto Bay? Yes, I have. I've walked Palmetto Bay and Pinecrest. Any big issues that in these three cities? Well, the Pinecrest issue, the Pinecrest issues is you, uh, water, water and sewer that a lot of houses don't have are not connected to the sewer system, and some of them are not connected to water either. That's a that's a big uh, issue. Um, at at your event with Governor DeSantis, I, that was brought up, and he and he said that he was going to help us get the funding for that. Right, so he did. I look forward to that during during the next legislation le legislative session. He um. Yeah, so then we go up to, um, yeah, Kendall, unincorporated, not part of a city. What are the issues there? Do you hear when you knock? Well, the I, I think the issues in are mostly the same. It's education, inflation, property tax. Um, that's property tax is a huge issue throughout the entire district. Uh, and we're going to work on that to see how we can make it, you know, maybe think out of the box, maybe just have catastrophic insurance for people when there's a hurricane, you know, bring every bring everybody to the table and see what we can come up with. Good, good. You know, Senator Soto, who's retired from county commission, he had town meetings. You plan to have town meetings to get the feel for it? Well, or do something. How are you, you going to communicate with those people? <sighs> Those town meetings, a lot of people don't go to them. It's unfortunate. You know, the thing is that people have to work. They have to pick up kids from school. I don't know how they, they do have it. To, it, You know, they have to soccer game, ballet. But, you know, I see And for my, you, you it, got 11 grandchildren. Right. No, no, listen. <laughs> but um, how do you, you can how, do town meetings like now via virtual. the phone yeah, or well, virtually. So you're uh, going to communicate with the people somehow, some way. Yeah, well, listen, I always give everybody my cell phone number. I've always been very accessible. I've always been very accessible. And that's not going to change. I have. The same cell phone number since I got my cell phone. I've had that same number. So uh, so then we go to Kendall. We go to parts of Westchester. You go up. How far do you go up to the north end? Uh, the north end is Southwest 8th Street. And it's between 67th Avenue and 87th Avenue until we get to Kendall. 
When we get to Kendall Drive, it opens up to 117th Avenue and 57th Avenue. And we have all of Palmetto Bay, Cutler Bay, Pinecrest, uh, The Falls, and Dayland. So a lot, you know. You're my voter, by the I way. Know. I yeah. need you to vote for me. My number is I vote 52. early. I vote early. And often. And, and often. <laughs> you know, some state reps, they have all a bunch of cities. Right. You only have three cities. Yes. In your whole district. So you have a lot of unincorporated. Because a lot of the issues people complain about, cities can complain, handle it. Yours, you have Kendall, you have Westchester going up to 8th Street. So you have people that you're going to be like the mayor of their community. Well, that's great. You know, I, I look forward to serving my community and, and uh, being there for the people. You know, even though I've, I'm not an, I'm not an elected office, I still get calls all the time about different issues, you know, well, you've served 30 years and I know people, I know people in different places and it's important. You know, it's sometimes you just pick up the phone and call someone and you can get maybe a light resolved. You know, sometimes people have issues with their, with their trash containers and they don't know where to call. Or they've called and they haven't received a response, you know. And so it's, it's going to be important. exciting for you. Yes, I'm. I'm very excited. Explain to the people. People think state rep is in Tallahassee all the time. How many months of the year? No, ago? actually, actually, a state representative goes to Tallahassee during committee weeks. Right. For two for two months, you go to Tallahassee for committee weeks, and then after that, there's two months of legislative session. The session used to always be um, January. January, February, February, what, January, February, no, actually, um, cause now is now there's two times where they do it. They do it a January and then they do the March. Right. And it could rotate. Right. A little bit. It's rotating one year. It's one and one year is the other. I, I believe that Lieutenant governor Jeanette Nunez changed that because what would happen is that nobody could ever have, um, during, uh, Easter. Didn't she go, she went to high school down here, didn't she? Jeanette? Yes, she did. St. Brendan's or something like that? I don't know what high school she graduated from. All right, so remember. it's very exciting. I've people. known you 30 years and all the uh, people you work with, and I'm excited because I think that you're going to bring something. There's no downtime. If you if you don't know Tallahassee, it's going to take you a year or two. You, when you get elected, when you start that day, you're up and running. Yes, yes. When I when I get elected, God willing, November eighth is the election. <laughs> um, but the early, early voting goes out a month ahead. Yeah, early uh, voting starts two weeks prior to that. Right. And people that vote by mail by October eighth, uh, they should be receiving their vote by mail um, ballot. Those people that vote, yeah, by mail. So uh, voting starts at the beginning of October. Now, how the breakdown of your district: Republican, Democrat, Independent. We have 4,000 more registered Republican voters in District 115. And that's the first time two years ago it wasn't like that. Well, a lot of people have changed right. parties. So, and I don't, and a lot clear. of MPAs have, have also moved. So, yeah, we have. And there, a lot of new people have moved into um, into Palmetto Bay and Cutler Bay. and Oh, Cutler Bay, as we yeah. talked off record off before the show, it's double its population in yeah. 10 years. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful city. Yeah. The mayor does a great job. Yeah. Mayor Tim so you're very lucky. Job. We're going to be very lucky when you get elected. Uh, what's your punch number? My punch number is 52. 52. When you yes. get, if you, if you want to do early voting, great. If you want to do absentee, contact election bureau, right? Yeah. It's very easy. You know, if you go into miamidate.gov and you go to the uh, elections. Right. Um. Right there, you can, you know, order your vote by mail uh, and you can get all kinds of information. Uh, if you haven't registered to vote, you can also, you know, download the application and register to vote. Uh, me personally, I don't like absentee. I like I, I like the early voting. I like to go in. I like to punch a number, you know, and I, I, I just love that. I just I, yeah, I love tradition. It's exciting. You know, it's exciting to go vote. It is exciting to go vote. The thing is that especially for people that are elderly or infirmed or people that have a lot of kids and have a lot of responsibilities, sometimes you can't get to your voting precinct on time. And it's really very important to vote. You know, coming from a country where we, you know, where there's no voting and we have communism, I, I don't take voting for granted. Uh, and it's very important. So, you know, it's a good thing that we have different ways of, of you know, making your voice heard. And, you know, the difference, the reason why we speak English instead of German in the United States, it's one, one vote. One vote was the one that said we were going to speak in English. 
and not in German. Wow. Yeah. You know, and I know a state rep, I'm not going to say his name, who lost by one vote because one of his family members didn't vote. <laughs> so here's an important, important question. How many nights of the 30 nights in each month, how many nights do you babysit? Well, let's get, let's get down to the root. <laughs> Listen, whenever they ask me to babysit, I'm there. I Yes, I love it. I love being a grandma. It's great. You get to spoil them and then you send them home. Even though, you know, I like, wait, you know, well-behaved well children. Uh, and they are. They are. My, my grandkids, they're a lot of fun. Good. Yeah. But, you know, I only have three now that I babysit. Everybody else has grown. That's all right. Yeah, it's Grand all right. Great-grandchildren soon. All right. Elena Garcia, she's our person. Make sure you vote early. Everybody, have a great day. Later.